Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation we're going to look at I Teach Sampling. I Teach Sampling is used to explain how the analyzer digitizes an analog signal to create the digital signal that is then processed by the FFT. Now, in this case we've got a signal that's 30 Hertz and here it is. There's just a simple sine wave and that's great. And ideally when we digitize that signal we will end up with a digital version of this waveform here and you look at this digital signal and it's perfect. You can't really tell the difference between the two and we end up with a spectrum that clearly shows the peak at the correct frequency. So if we do everything correctly this is how it should look. But let's explore a little more closely. Now what we've got is that same analog voltage signal. But what we've done is we've said to the vibration analyzer, we want to set your sampling rate so that it's quite slow. The number of samples it takes every second is now quite a low number and it's all presented here. But that means that at this point in time it will digitize the voltage, which is the green value, and keep that value and then it digitizes it again here and here and here and here and so on and so forth. Well if we were to um, reconstruct the waveform from these yellow points this is what we end up with. In fact I can show the overlay so if I draw straight lines between each of these points which is all the software is doing inside uh, you know, either the analyzer or the vibration analysis software you're using to create that time waveform it's just joining the dots. Um, but what does this signal look like? Is that signal equal to this green signal? No. If I did an FFT of that it'll tell me that I've got a frequency which does not exist and this is the problem with aliasing. We are seeing one thing that does not actually represent the the data and if I increase the sample rate you see that as I change the samples per second we get a sample here, a sample here, a sample in this particular case and this is what we would be uh, performing an FFT of and it's it's not right. Now if I just keep increasing the sample rate and here we've got one cycle here I still only have one sample per cycle and if we keep on going at this particular point I have exactly two samples per cycle. Exactly two and what do I end up with? A flat line. It, it doesn't tell us anything about the signal. But as soon as I go above two samples per cycle, which is what the Nyquist criterion says, well if we were to do an FFT of this signal here, although it looks a little bit odd, we would get a peak in the spectrum at 30 hertz. Now it would be a broad peak, it wouldn't look very good. In fact we can, we can see it here, it's sort of a big hump which is just inside but let's not uh, dwell on that just for the moment. But the fact is we have to sample it more than twice per cycle. Now from a time waveform analysis point of view this thing's terrible. We can't really see what's going on. We'd like to you know, have the sample rate up higher. If I just lean on this for a while. Now I can see all of these samples on each cycle and now my digital version of my signal starts to look a lot more like my green analog version. If I just turn off the overlay you can see the green one more clearly. But of course if we then had higher frequency vibration you can see I've got my samples up high enough that even uh, with this higher frequency component of the signal as well. If I turn off the 1x you can see there's just the 2x vibration um, and then 6x. Now we're just seeing 6x. Well now we're not sampling it high enough. So obviously the design of the analyzer and the way your software works is to always make sure we're sampling it more than two times as high. Uh, so we've got more than two samples per cycle. In fact the way we do it we get uh, 2.56 samples per cycle of the highest frequency that we're interested in. Um, now from a time waveform analysis point of view again we're interested in how many samples uh, per, per cycle of all the wave, uh, of all the sort of signal components that we're interested in. And look with this simulator we could spend a lot of time on this but I can simulate an impact as well. Let's just 
back off on those. Now I've got a little impact. So once per revolution in this case right now, um, I've got this this impact which could be uh, a looseness fault. So the shaft goes around and bing, you know, something something happens. But we can't really see it in our time waveform, so we obviously need to sample it at a higher rate. Now there's much more this simulator can do. We can get into the spectrum analysis part of it. We can even get into what happens if the machine is changing in speed. So in this case we've got a machine that's going faster, 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 faster. And if I use normal uh, sampling techniques, which means there is a, a fixed time between the samples, our spectrum will be hopeless. It will be all broadened and, and the amplitude will be down. So instead we use a tracking filter and we track this, we make the sample rate in proportion to the speed of the machine. So we watch the speed of the machine and we adjust our sample rate accordingly and we end up with much better data. If we just ramp that up by a factor of 10 then uh, we've got a nice analog signal. Now you might think, well what is this? Well this is in proportion to the running speed of the machine. So we get a nice sine wave which is just always equal to the running speed. We, frequency doesn't mean as much anymore, it's just order normalized. This is 1x, whatever the speed is at any time. Anyway, we're not here to really discuss all of that. Point is we can demonstrate all of this and much, much more with this iTeach sampling. And we've got some other simulators that help in this discussion as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this presentation of iTeach sampling. Maybe it uh, helped you understand something a little more clearly than you did before. But uh, either way, thanks very much for taking the time to view the presentation.